Thank you all for being here this evening. Uh, Mr. S Acting City Manager, would you please call the roll? I mean, uh, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rickerman. <laughs> Mr. McDowell. Here. Mr. Duvall. Here. Mr. Devine. Mr. Davis. Here. Mayor Benjamin. Here. I want to thank, thank uh, our, our Acting City Manager, uh, Jeff Palin, for stepping up. He's done an admirable job today as a City Manager out on, uh, on, on medical leave. and. Uh, we're going to, you said we'd be out of here by 6.30, you said? What you say? 6.30. 6.42. 6.42. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I'm going to ask um, Justin, Jalen Ellis, and Levi Pfeiffer to come up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Come on, Levi. Come on, guys. Stand right here, right in the middle. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. It's always great to have our young people lead us in the pledge. The um, Red, would you please lead us in a brief invocation? Let us pray. We gather in this chamber tonight to discuss, present, and act on issues within our city. We simply ask that thou would sensitize each of us with your care, sensitize us to all the things that are necessary to, to make community building and community expansion a reality in every life in Columbia. Bless us all. Amen. 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 Thank you, Red McDowell. Is there a motion to adopt the agenda? Uh, uh, Mr. Rickman. I'm not sure your mic's, mic's not on, Daniel. I know this wasn't on the agenda, but I wanted us at some point to, to acknowledge and, and, and ask staff to pursue options for matching funds for the Park Street. Uh, we've been working in the Vista for I don't know how long to address the issues on Park Street when it comes to um, the trash and everything, which is a real gateway between our convention center the Colonial Center and our hospitality there. I know staff has been working on it, but I think it's very important for us as a council to endorse them to, to move forward and get those matching funds, which will be the DOT, COG, and several other sources uh, with that. But I think it's very important that we acknowledge that we're behind it. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'd like to add that at the appropriate time. I, I know that I spoke Absolutely. to Mr. Palin about that. and. Um, he was running such an efficient meeting downstairs that we just skipped over it because we were moving so fast. All right. All right. We'll take it up on, on, on the other matters, okay? We'll take it up on the other, on the other matters. Uh, with that change, can we adopt the agenda as amended? Is there a motion? Go move. Is there a second? Any discussion? Move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Devine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Um, public input related to agenda items. All right. Um, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda items 10 through 23? I'll move. Is there a second? Is there discussion? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. I had, uh, I had asked staff uh, if they would come and give us a presentation on item 19. Um, mm -hmm. As sure. we continue to move forward on our, our Clean Water 2020 and, and working through the consent agenda, this is a $28 million contract, and I thought it was very important for sure. our constituents Absol to hear, hear about it and where we're going. Absolutely. Go ahead, please. Joey? Yes, sir. So, so this project... Um, is a very important project for us at our wastewater treatment plant to ensure that we are meeting our future limits, our discharge limits. Um, the meat of this project is, is we're replacing on the original train, the original plant at our Metro wastewater treatment plant, the aeration basin. We use surface water aerators, which is what, what was part of the original design. We are replacing those um, with a more modern aeration system um, dissolved air uh, diffusers 
that we use actually in train two, but we're improving that process as well. So with this, we're improving um, how we, how we um, treat at, at our metro wastewater treatment plant. Um, it's to meet our future limits. It's actually written into our permit that we're negotiating with DHEC right now that we do this project as well. So, so it's, it's really a part of how we're improving our operation in our metro wastewater treatment plant. We're also, as a part of this project, it gives us better control um, on how we operate that. Um, it, it, we've got some, um, some operation improvements with that, but also we we're, we're have some electrical improvements at, at the treatment plant as well. Is this separate and apart from the anaerobic digester project? Is this yes, sir. separate and apart? Separate and apart. Yes, sir. Okay. This is separate. Okay. All right. Um, it, this was a uh, subcontractor <laughs> outreach program project. Uh, we met the requirements as a part of that. Um, we had CDE mm -hmm. re requirements, um, local contractors, um, minority contractors. We had a part of that. We met our limit, our, our requirement there as well. So. Thank you, Mr. Duval. Uh, Mr. Jaco, will this increase our capacity for treatment for? Expansion of our system. This this allows us to move that direction. It's every improvement we make, we're building in the ability to expand. Good. Amen. Okay. Good deal. Right. Good deal. Um, any other questions for Clint and Joey? Not um, with the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yeah. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. If we could go back to item number nine. Absolutely. Council is asked to approve the February 20, 2018 City Council meeting minutes. Let's skip the minutes, I apologize. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any uh, discussion? Seeing none, we'll move the previous question. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Next item, number 24, is resolution number R2018-018, permitting the fire department to collect money for the Muscular Dystrophy Association, March 21st through 23rd. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Let's <laughs> <laughs> wait for that, Howard. All right, Mr. Duval does not believe we should be raising money in the rights of way. All right. I noticed that the staff this year moved it off of the consent agenda so, so that I would have my opportunity to do my yearly protest. Uh, it's not that I am against raising money for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. I just have a fear uh, that this causes two problems. Number one, it puts our firemen at risk when they go into a busy intersection to collect money. And number two, there is a large amount of, amount of money raised in boots uh, and I think that's a physical risk uh, for the uh, fire department and for the city. So I, I will um, vote no on this, Mr. Mayor. And duly noted, Mr. Duval. Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? <coughs> Mr. Duval? No. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Presentations. Sure, let's move into presentations. Uh, is Ms. Lindler here? Uh, I don't believe she'll be here till about 7. Oh, so 7 so, p.m., right? So we'll go ahead we'll of schedule. She, she did say 7 p.m. I apologize. All right, let's just move on through. Childhood cancer. Childhood Cancer Awareness Day Proclamation. Right. The Honorable Mayor Stephen K. Benjamin. All right. I'm doing this. Thank whoever it is who actually someone that I think has increased the font size just a tad bit on these resolutions. I, I appreciate that. Um, whereas childhood cancer remains a leading cause of death by disease in children under the age of 15, and whereas only 4% of the National Center's uh, National Cancer Institute's budget is dedicated to all forms of pediatric cancer, and whereas more than 40,000 children undergo treatment for pediatric cancer each year, and whereas in the past 20 years only three pharmaceutical drugs have been approved by the FDA for childhood cancer treatment, and whereas the lack of profitability by pharmaceutical companies results in fewer clinical trials and no new treatments being proposed for children who are fighting disease, and whereas Pimenta Health, Children's Hospital Center for Cancer and Blood Disorders, is the oldest and largest pediatric cancer facility in South Carolina as a member of the Children's Oncology Group, a National Cancer Institute supported, uh, uh, National Cancer Institute supported clinical trials group. 
And whereas Palmetto Health Children's Hospital Center for Ch Cancer and Blood Disorders is proud to raise awareness of and promote increased funding for childhood cancer, now therefore I, Stephen K. Benjamin, Mayor of the City of Columbia, along with my fellow members of Columbia City Council, do hereby proclaim March 12, 2018, to be Childhood Cancer Awareness Day in the City of Columbia and urge our fellow citizens to recognize and participate in its observance. Who's going to receive this on behalf? Okay, item 28, Bleeding Disorders Awareness Month Proclamation, the Honorable Mayor Stephen K. Benjamin. Um, whereas March 2018 is nationally recognized as Bleeding Disorders Awareness Month, and whereas this designation will formalize and expand upon the designation 30 years ago of March 1986 as Hemophilia Awareness Month by President Ronald Reagan, and whereas these bleeding disorders would share their inability to, to form a proper blood clot are characterized by extended bleeding after injury, surgery, trauma, or menstruation and can, claw, can lead to, to significant morbidity and can be fatal if not treated effectively. And whereas many individuals with hemophilia became infected with HIV and hepatitis C in the in 1980s due to the contamination of the blood supply and blood products. And whereas Bleeding Disorders Awareness Month will generate greater awareness and understanding of not only hemophilia but all inheritable bleeding disorders including von Willebrand disease, which alone impacts an estimated 1% of the U.S. population of more than 3.2 million individuals. And whereas Bleeding Disorders Awareness Month will foster a greater sense of community and shared purpose among individuals with all inheritable bleeding disorders. And whereas Bleeding Disorders Awareness Month will elevate awareness of and engagement in the inheritable bleeding disorders journey beyond our community to the general public, enabling the prevention of illness, unnecessary procedures, and disability. Now, therefore, I... Stephen K. Benjamin, Mayor of the City of Columbia, along with my fellow members of Columbia City Council, do hereby proclaim March 2018 to be Bleeding Disorders this way, Awareness Month. In the great city of Columbia, we urge our fellow citizens to recognize and participate in its observance. All right, please. Doris. Item 29, American Red Cross Day Proclamation, the Honorable Stephen K. Benjamin. Thank you. And Lauren, Lauren, would you take this thing again? We're happy to have our friends from the Red Cross with us as, as, um, as always. Please get that. The, um, whereas the American Red Cross, so a record-breaking year in 2017, of challenging domestic and international response efforts through the support of its volunteers in just 45 days, the Red Cross responded to six of the largest and most complex disasters of 2017, including back-to-back -back hurricanes, the deadliest week of wildfires in California history, and the horrific mass shooting in Las Vegas. In addition, the Red Cross responded to nearly 50,000 home fires in 2017, providing casework assistance to help 76,000 families recover. Whereas in Central South Carolina, the Red Cross has a long history of helping our neighbors in need. The Central South Carolina chapter assisted more than 740 local disasters in the past year alone. They installed nearly 7,000 smoke alarms with its partners and reached 1,500 children with fire safety information. In our area, the Red Cross handles an average of 2,600 emergency military calls every year, collects an average of 32,000 units of blood from our generous blood donors. Whereas March is American Red Cross Month, a special time to recognize and thank the Red Cross volunteers and donors who give of their time and resources to help members of the community. The Red Cross depends on these local heroes to deliver help and hope during a disaster. We applaud our heroes here in Columbia who give themselves of themselves to assist their neighbors when they need a helping hand. Whereas across the country and around the world, the American Red Cross responds to disasters big and small, 
It collects about 40% of the nation's blood supply, provides 24-hour support to military members, veterans, and their families, teaches millions life-saving skills such as lifeguarding and CPR, and through its Restoring Family Links program, connects family members separated by crisis, conflict, or migration. Now, therefore, I, Stephen K. Benjamin, Mayor of the City of Columbia, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and laws of South Carolina and Columbia, do hereby proclaim March 2018 as American Red Cross Month. I encourage all Americans to support this organization and its noble humanitarian mission. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Benjamin. I'm Allison Cranford. I'm the chairman of the Central Carolina's American Red Cross. Thank you, uh, Ms. Devine, for all your past service, too, on the board. I just wanted to make note that we have been doing this mayor blood drive for eight years in Columbia. We have collected 1,821 units of blood with the City of Columbia employees. Wow. And moreover, that has helped 5,463 lives. Awesome. Which awesome. is huge, just from our people here in the City of Columbia. And I wanted to say a special thank you to Kimberly Roof for all your organization and time and service you have provided to the American Red Cross. Yeah. Help them yeah. so shy. I'm not sure if you guys have been down there, have been running like clockwork. Uh, it's an amazing partnership. We're so thankful. All right. All right. We're going to um, move to number 30. 30. 30. Mm -hmm. Item 30, 30. 31, I apologize. 31. 31. 31. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Historic Columbia update. Ms. Kim Jamison, Historic Columbia Board Liaison for the City of Columbia, and Ms. Jalen Ellis, Student Volunteer. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you this evening. I'm Kim Jameson, one of the city's two liaisons to the Board of Trustees for Historic Columbia. Before I begin, I want to recognize my fellow board members. If they would please stand. We have a lot here today. We also have representation from the Palladium Society as well, so thank you all for being here. And a special thank you to, I was like looking around there, um, our executive director of Historic Columbia, Robin Waite. So uh, thank ben. you so much. Uh, <laughs> On behalf of the board, I want to thank you for your support of our work and your, our, and your willingness to entrust some of Columbia's most important historic assets to our care. Tonight, I'm here to provide an update to a place that is very near and dear to my heart, the Man Simon site. As you know, on September 17, 2016, the historic property reopened following comprehensive interpretive enhancements. Findings from archaeological excavations and structural investigations combined with extensive analysis of historic images, manuscripts, newspapers, city directories, census records, and maps coincided with an institutional shift from a 20th century interpretive approach to a 21st century skills educational model. The interpretive format more effectively engages audiences in conveying how issues and events in our forebearers' lives are relevant to our present community. The site's new multidimensional interpretive exhibits offer guests a highly interpretive, um, a highly interactive experience. Highlights include artifacts that speak to to entrepreneurship, gun, gun violence, late 19th and early 20th century fast food ways and race. Videos include excerpts 
from historic television news footage covering such topics as ur urban renewal, segregation, and the Confederate flag. In addition, a contemporary video with Celia Mann's, get this, great, great, great granddaughter in 2015 is included. In a few minutes, I will yield the microphone to a young woman who was inspired by the site just as I am. As the chair of Historic Columbia's marketing committee, I'm pleased to report the success that has been realized thanks in part to the city's investment of HTAX marketing dollars in the site. Historic Columbia saw tremendous promotional success around the reopening and garnered more than 100 media hits. In addition, we saw large advertising impressions and by leveraging its more, I'm sorry, and leveraging its limited marketing dollars received nearly three times the budgets in free in-kind advertising from media sponsors. Historic Columbia also saw a spike in social media engagement around the reopening and the Man Simon site website saw 1,309 page views, which is up 143% over last year at the same time. During Black History Month programming in 2017, more than 300 visitors participated in programming at the site. The new exhibits have also helped Historic Columbia recruit new volunteer tour guides. Since reopening, 58 new guides have been trained to deliver tours of the Man Simon site. Additionally, Historic Columbia has welcomed nearly 800 students through the site on guided field trips. The comprehensive upgrades at the Man Simon site are illustrative of the organization's most recent 21st century skills-related initiative, which builds upon the foundation of other Historic Columbia projects including the transformation of the Woodrow Wilson family home into the only museum in the nation focused on reconstruction error. The reinterpretation of the Man Simon site has reaffirmed its position as a thought-provoking cultural attraction in the capital city. We simply could not do this extraordinary work without your support, so thank you. As noted, I'm joined by many others who were inspired by the site and the story. Jalen Ellis is a senior at Blythewood High School, and she has been working with Historic Columbia staff since her freshman year. She's here tonight to tell you her story. All right. <laughs> good, uh, good evening. Uh, thank you, Ms. Jameson, for the introduction. Um, as she said, my name is Jalen Ellis. I became involved with Historic Columbia my freshman year of high school when I was invited to a listening session through the Columbia chapter of Jack and Jill of America Incorporated to receive input from, uh, from the community on how to gain more involvement. Uh, at the session, I was introduced to Historic Columbia uh, for the first time, as well as the Man Simon site, which was under construction at the time of my visit under, I guess, um, renovation. Um, after learning about the rich African-American history the site had to offer, I was excited to see what further steps I could take to increase awareness about the site in my community, especially to other youth. I chose the site and increasing youth participation with it as my topic for my Girl Scout Gold Award. The Man Simon site is significant to me due to its history and potential impact. The site has been historically African-American owned since the 1800s, which is rare and was especially important to me because in the past, my family has searched for our ancestry, but has been met with a lack of documentation. Um, being exposed to an African-American family, such as the Manns that have documentation, pictures, and a physical landmark of their lineage was inspiring to me, and I wanted to share it with others. Additionally, the rich contributions of the family to Columbia make the Manns unique, and I wanted the opportunity to help tell their story. Through working with Historic Columbia, I feel I've learned better communication skills in finding out how to present information to youth. I have a better understanding of my local history and more, and have been able to help other people become more interested as well. My own interest has expanded and I have begun more aggressively pursuing my family genealogy and I have developed an appreciation for local history in general that I can apply wherever I go. Thank you. Thank you. 
Once again, on behalf of the board and staff of Historic Columbia, thank you all for your support. Um, we're in the process of undergoing a similar transformation at the Majeska Simpkin site and look forward to reporting on that progress in the coming months. Thank you so much, and I'll open up the floor for questions if you have any. No, uh, just thank you all so much for all the work that you do. You're so you're wonderful stewards, not just of uh, these buildings, but of our history and, and saving them for our, our, our future. And, and uh, Jalen, fantastic job. Fantastic job. All right. All right. Um, I think we're good to go. And we will not take offense if you guys slip out of here. We know you got things to do. I'll tell you twice, huh, Doug? <laughs> no, thank you all so much for all you do. And Justin, thank you too, son. All right. All right. All right. Um, Mr. Acting City Manager? We're going to still hold for item 26. Uh, yeah, we're hold 26 and 30, and 30 for right now, right? And 30? Yeah, hold, hold 26 and 30, yes. Okay. Next item is uh, item 32, ordinance first reading. Ordinance number 2018-004. Authorizing the city manager execute an yeah, eleven. Motion. Is there a second? Second. In discussion. Yeah. Mr. Rickenman. I just I think it's important that we note the public understands what we're doing here. Uh, we are moving forward with an amendment, and that amendment um, includes that we will be able to draw down the money that has been put into escrow so that we can go ahead and demolish the stadium down there and start clearing that lot we've extended the um, contract out until the end uh, of, for one year and that is so that we can um, uh, give bright myers an opportunity to work with some folks they are but as part of the structure for moving forward we asked to go ahead and draw down the escrow money take care of that stadium so we'll start making improvements uh, in that corridor uh, hopefully that will be a lot better looking than it is now and uh, I just thought it was important that everybody understand what we're doing and why we're extending absolutely thank you mr. Rickman um, with the previous question Clark Colorado mr. Rickman aye mr. McDowell mr. Duvall aye mr. Vine aye mr. Davis aye mayor Benjamin aye all right Next item is item 33, resolution number R2018-002, first extension of Bull Street Development Agreement. Is there a motion? Move approval. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second. Second, second Mr. Davis. Discussion? Uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mr. Rickenman. Yeah, I, I do want um, District 4 constituents have, have asked a lot about this, and so I want to I explain our process. We did what you should do in due diligence. We, we had outside council look at, at the extension to make sure that we weren't missing anything. We've looked at all the numbers. We've met with the developer. One of the things that we are looking to do with the developer is to cap the cost of the garages so we limit our liability going f forward. Um, at this point, we're, we haven't gotten there. But it is important to note that, you know, we're currently paying interest on bonds and investment over there of about 1.6. And until we have negotiated out a garage, we're really not sure what that debt payment will be. And so we're going to have to look at that. And I think at a later date, it's important for the public to know that. Uh, there's no reason for us not to extend this contract. But I do think it's important that we have done our due diligence to staff. Uh, has provided all the documentation. They've gone through all of the funds that we've spent today and have all the backup for that. Uh, the outside council went through each thing to make sure that we were doing what we are supposed to and that the developer was doing what. So I just want to make sure that people understand that, that we have done the homework and the research in this, and that's why the staff's moving forward. However, I still would like, I am not voting for it until we can get um, the deal done with the capping of the garage and that's going to have to be some more negotiation with our staff and the developer and i just wanted that to be clear thank no, you mr no, mayor th thank you uh, mr rickman um i will move the previous question clark Colorado. mr rickman no mr mcdowell mr duvall aye mr vine aye mr davis aye mayor benjamin aye uh, thank you thank you daniel uh jeff uh, Are y'all ready for item 30? Yeah, we'll, um, we'll, we'll keep, we'll get 30. Uh, all right. 
Uh, Mr. McDowell uh, has the floor for recognition of the Camus Eruption Award recipients. You want to wait a little bit longer? Are they coming tonight? Yeah, we can wait till the end. We're way ahead of schedule, yeah, although we'll we started late. Whatever works for you. All right. Uh, you okay. All right, sounds good. Okay. Item 34. <clears throat> Item 34, resolution number R2018-008, ratifying the execution of the district office lease amendment and lease am attachment between the City of Columbia and U.S. House Representative James E. Clyburn for approximately 5,199 square feet of office space known as Suite 200, 1225 Lady Street. I move to approve. Second. Uh, in second discussion. With the previous question, Clerk Cotterell. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Ms. Devine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. All right. Item 35. Item 35. Before I read the resolution, I believe we have a director representing Norwegian Technologies with a presentation. We do, and I will briefly um, introduce Norwegian. We have Bernino Ayat from Norwegian here to make a quick presentation. Um, he, he is aware that this is a council meeting and we like these to be concise, but I thought it was worth y'all hearing from Bewegian, who will be our bike share vendor. And we're really excited to be at this point. You've heard a lot about Walt Bike Columbia and connectivity throughout the city and the region. And this is a really big step forward. So we welcome um, him here to give his presentation. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity for being here today. We're really excited about the bike share program. As uh, Missy said, I'm Director of Business Development and Marketing at Bewegan, and I'll get right into it so I don't take too much of your time. That's I think that's the U-verse remote, actually. <laughs> I, I know it kind of by heart, so I could get into it and then we'll catch up if we need to. So Bewegan Technology is a company from Canada, an industry leader in electric bike sharing systems, and Columbia will be getting some electric bikes within the fleet, so that's really exciting. Uh, we're in right now 18 cities throughout the world, mainly in the U.S. Closer to here, we'll be launching this summer in Raleigh, North Carolina. We're already in Richmond, Virginia, Baltimore, Maryland, uh, we'll also be launching in Columbia, Riverside, California, Summit County, Utah, so all, all over the place in, uh, in just five years of existence of our company. Our company is a high-tech company. We have live and active GPS on the bikes, which makes it really fun for planning purposes and other. Um, and uh, you can use the data from the bikes to plan bike paths or, or other different things. So we no longer are a docking-based uh, system. We're a smart bike company and really the, all the technology is on the bike. So each bike is smart in itself, has a computer, a GPS, and uh, telecommunications. Our company uh, is uh, partnered with uh, industry leaders for the bike manufacturing, uh, the company that owns Rocky Mountain, a leading uh, mountain bike company, and uh, as well as uh, electric bikes. Where's the... So these are the 18 uh, cities I was talking about. I forgot Costa Rica and the countries, Portugal, uh, Germany, uh, England as well. So really uh, we're, we're, we're getting uh, quite uh, popular throughout the world and really it's because of the pedelec. Pedelec means electric assist bike. So that, that's really our specialty. Where is Papaguayo? Papaguayo is in Costa Rica. Costa Rica, okay. That's my, okay. one of my favorite spots to go and Colombia's <laughs> weather is pretty similar. So I like here as well. So. <laughs> okay. So uh, so Bewigan System, as I said, we're cutting edge. We have different types of products available. As we, not only do we do electric bikes, we do fully powered shelters as well for some of our systems. So it's really the best of the best as far as technology goes. So there will be solar panels to power them? Uh, or are you going for solar? the first phase, there, there are not. not but that's okay. something we could put in at, okay. at a later phase. It's always about uh, budget. Good. So mm -hmm. as many bikes as we can for the price and then build from there. So can, can I ask you a question, I guess, sure. about the powered bikes? So are all of the bikes that we're getting powered bikes? No, there's a percentage of the bikes. I believe it's one-third. Uh, okay. Oh, that's good, though. Okay. 
That's I'm right. like, if we're encouraging and people to ride and be healthy, I so mean, it's with, an option. It's an option. Uh, right, right. You I can know. turn it off and on. Yes. Yeah, and, and it is important. You'd be, you'd be the bottom I of that hill if you want. You I'll need, need that electricity. With this slide, I think. Okay, I hope. please. Um, so, why is it important to include Pedelec bikes in the fleet? Pedelec does attract new users to, to biking. So, people that would not normally bike, people that are used to staying at home or not taking any active transportation because they uh, are not uh, completely fit, they are a little bit older, they have not ridden bikes in a long time, Pedelec does really allow these people to ride. Uh, even people with uh, certain um, injuries, recovering from injuries, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the veterans that we help a little bit later, but so some of the guys that work for us uh, are veterans, injured veterans, and could not ride bikes, and when they got on our bike, we're able to ride it. So I really do think that, to answer your question, it's. Uh, not having the people that currently ride bikes ride bikes because they already ride bikes is getting new people to ride bikes and really making it an alternative uh, mode of transportation to the car. Uh, a little bit of our data that shows exactly that is that we have systems with electric bikes and regular bikes. Our regular bikes are used three times more than our, our, our electric bikes are used three times more than our regular bikes in the system. There was also a study from University of Tennessee in Knoxville that showed that 17% of uh, bike share users were willing to leave the car to go to bike share if it was electric, whereas only 8% would do it if it was regular bikes. So these are just examples of stations. So you were asking what kind of stations we're getting. You'll have some of these, which are payment kiosk stations, wayfinding stations, and uh, just regular docking stations. We can also do virtual stations because we have GPS technology, so we can geofence areas temporarily or permanently, so making it cheaper on infrastructure. And we could also do it for special events, so games uh, at the stadium or whatnot, where you know that a station would never be big enough to accommodate uh, the bikes that are going at that one particular moment. We could geofence a parking lot or a specific area where we can leave as many bikes as we want, lock them up with the secondary lock, and people could go and enjoy the game. And then we could also designate, for example, the university campus as a completely free-floating free area where people could go to and from uh, where they wish, when they wish, without actually docking it into a station. Mm -hmm. Our IT solution is proven. It's very solid, so 95% of uptime and the GPS capabilities, which I've already talked about. <coughs> you, users can unlock the bike with different means. They can sign up, get a fob through the mail, uh, or use the mobile app or get a card at the payment kiosk and then tap it directly on the bike to use the bike. Some of the uh, stats that we can get out of the system, this is just an example of how precise our GPS. It's anonymous data, but it's important data, I think, for your planning department uh, if you're looking to do multi-mode integrations and planning of bike paths and different things that, that you're looking to do for bikes and pedestrians. Well, this data, I think, it will be very useful for you. As far as marketing goes, uh, we really do a tailored marketing uh, ongoing and launch plan for each city. There's four steps. I won't go through all of them, but the main important is to Im implicate local uh, businesses and stakeholders because we're not from here. So if I try to do a cookie cutter marketing campaign, mm -hmm. it's not going to work. No one's going to use the bikes if we do a standard. So implicate local uh, influencers and equ have equity in mind in each one of those marketing uh, steps. Some examples of marketing events that we do in Baltimore, Richmond, so parades, uh, special Valentine's Day promotions, uh, rides uh, in different business areas, uh, all, all, all types of stuff. Also for that equity that I was talking about, we partner, we started in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina for this, but uh, we partner with Kristen Jeffers uh, she runs the blog that's the B Black Urbanist, and what she'll do for us is help us. She's from North Carolina. I know it's not local, local, but she does know the area, and for making sure that the system is equitable to everyone, she will be consulting for us uh, in Raleigh, but also in Columbia. As far as the operations go, I think that this is where I want to spend my time, is that we hire a U.S. veteran-owned business to operate the bike. So everyone that you're going to see on the street Almost everyone is going to be a veteran. They need to be uh, also supported because we work with local organizations to have mainly veterans recovering from addiction or previously homeless veterans into the workforce. Uh, 
Corp Logistics led by First Sergeant Jim Duffney from the National Guard Air Force uh, recently uh, had a national partnership with the VA. So the VA helps us get uh, kind of the employees that we need in every city and make sure that it's veterans uh, that, that need help and that they basically vet the veterans before uh, Jim uh, can, can hire them in each one of the, the programs. Mm. So this is just some examples of what First Sergeant Duffney does. He picked up a veteran off the street and hired him, brought him to the VA hospital, some barbecue events on every Sunday. They do food drives for, for the homeless in the city. So they really become a part of the community and create this local, uh, completely local operation with veterans. I'd like to show you this video that shows a little bit of a testimony of some of the veterans that First Sergeant Duffney has hired in Baltimore. Ivan Baylor's job at the Baltimore Bike Share isn't just a nine to five. And I love meeting people all the time. And everywhere I go, they say, here come bike man. For this homeless veteran, it's a second chance. So when I came back home, um, there was no jobs, nowhere. But bike man isn't alone here at the operations branch of the bike share business. His story is one of many. The real mission is to end homelessness uh, amongst veterans and create jobs for those people in an environment where we give them the most success to be, to keep going forward. And that's what we do here. A mission started by owner Jim Duffney two years ago. If we can't take care of our own, who are we gonna take care of? Through a partnership with the Baltimore Station, a recovery house for veterans who are homeless and addicted. Lost a job, got evicted, okay. Lost my relationship with the, uh, uh, my children's mother. That is no life for anyone. I mean, all it does is just tear you down, and, and what it does, it kills you. By the grace of God, this opportunity came, came by, and you know, I jumped on it. Four veterans now back in the trenches, facing the battle of addiction together. If you served in the military, then there's a camaraderie. All of us together, and everybody's so happy, you know, and we all feel the same way about working together and excelling together. And for these guys, spending their days maintaining the bikes, and parking them at stations across the city is the opportunity they've been waiting for. I don't even think about the drugs or the alcohol. It's just, you know, be productive. I, I, I don't know too many words to express the joy that I have, you know, the way I'm living my life now. You know, it's, it's, it's beautiful. And the job of a lifetime in Baltimore. Oh, I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world. Angelo Bavaro, CNS TV. So Core Logistics currently have throughout the U.S. over 40 previously homeless vets that they now hire with, with, with full-time jobs and will continue, continue doing that in Colombia, really giving it a local flair, but also really helping the community while providing a, a true transportation service. And really, as I said, we'll make this project a priority with those kinds of initiatives and uh, you know, really creating a local uh, operation and working as partners and not only a supplier of a bike share system. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, and you expect here we'll also engage a number of homeless uh, citizens, veterans? Yes. So okay. we, in Baltimore, uh, we first hired only previously homeless, but we've had a couple that uh, kind of uh, were, were struggling with addiction and had uh, relapses. So we, we've established this new model where we hire a percentage, maybe 50% or 70% of previously homeless or previously uh, struggling with addiction and support them with stronger models uh, that, that are maybe didn't have the same types of problems. Awesome. So we will do the same thing here in Colombia. We're excited about it. It'll be great, I'm sure. Up and running ASAP, right? Yeah, I was yeah. going to say, what's the time frame? The time frame is uh, the end of, of summer, so August to September time frame. All right. Oh, okay. Is it Mr. Mr. Rickman? Yeah. Can somebody explain how it works with us? I, I've been trying to read all the documents, but I couldn't quite figure out, is it we just supply you the property and then they put in and we get a share of it? Is, uh, I, I'm not, I couldn't understand the capital need requirement in this. And, and So we as a city have talked about bike share for quite a while. So we went through a procurement process to select the vendor we want to represent bike share in our city. We are also working with the vendor to secure sponsorships. So 
There will be no upfront money from the City of Columbia required. We do have a bike share plan or a walk bike plan that identifies the locations for the initial rollout and phase two of the rollout. We will obviously work with the vendor and any sponsors that are secured to confirm those locations. Um, there is a cost share after operations and maintenance are covered of, um, I believe 80% comes back to the city to be used for bike infrastructure throughout the city, which as you've heard us talk about Walk Bike Columbia, there's a lot of infrastructure needs as well. So we're excited about that potential. Um, I think we need to also be realistic that it might take a little bit of time to see any of those funds because there are, certainly are some upfront costs that um, with rolling the program out. And so will this will work like it in New York or anywhere else? People will put in their credit card and then have various places to drop off? Yes, so as I said, you could either put your credit card, but in the equity plan, we also provide with cash payment options for the unbanked population um, at different locations with partners throughout the city. So as New York, with electric bikes and more advanced, you can unlock with the app, mobile app now and whatnot, but essentially, yes. Well, hopefully it won't be like playing Frogger when you ride one in New York. <laughs> Ms. Devine. Um, uh, two quick things. Number one, um, uh, Sam and I were at the COG uh, uh, when there was a presentation that West Columbia and Casey are also exploring um, different bike things. I think um, it's come to the COG now and it'll actually go to the both city councils. The recommendation really was that uh, number one, that they work on the infrastructure first instead of um, before they explore bike share but then the biggest one was they needed to wait and see what columbia was going to do because they might want to piggyback on what we have and so i would urge you missy to you know let them know where we are with the process i didn't know exactly where we were so i didn't want to say anything but we need to let them know where we are and that might impact their decision making as they move forward okay. we would love to do that we've talked about this being regional. So while, while we may be the ones getting it started, and we're doing that in conjunction with COG and USC and all of our colleges and universities, so we'll also reach out to our regional partners. We really do want this to be a one system for our whole region, and you can go over to West Columbia, but we want you to come back to Columbia as well. But certainly we want to reach out to West Columbia and KC and Forest Acres and all of our smaller areas surrounding us as well. You come up that hill and you're going to want that electric bike to make a... I know from, North from Maine is a bear. That's why I don't do North Maine anymore <laughs> on my bike. Um, the second thing was, um, and I think it's great to, um, to have the partnership with the consultant from North Carolina and everything. I will say that we do have... Um, probably a local resource that might work in conjunction. April, uh, what's James Jones? It's, yeah. You know, I don't, but um, she and her, Jones, um, lives in Pinehurst. She's a biker and very much into um, what we're trying to do here. And so she, and she's a blogger as well. And so I think that she, she wants to be engaged. Um, that might be a good resource as well. Lots of great. Resources, of course, I work, work closely with BPAC as well. I move approval. Is there a second? Second. Uh, discussion? Move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Looking forward to the partnership. Thank you all. All right. Um, please. They are electric. Only a portion of them have um, third, electric assist. Mm -hmm. Okay, Missy, is will there be any for those of us who will use one of the bikes and we run out of power going up a hill? <laughs> okay, let you answer that. <laughs> so for, first of all, <laughs> it's important to note it's not an electric bike; it's an electric assist bike. So there's no throttle; you have to pedal. So it's human powered. It just gives you that little push when you need it through yeah. an algorithm. Yeah. So it generates its own. It, it does not. It has a battery, but that yeah. battery is a 690 watt battery, which lasts 60 miles. So. So if I'm going up a okay, good, okay. <laughs> <laughs> It works. It works. <laughs> we'll be looking for that picture. Huh? 
We'll be looking for that picture. Yeah, right. <laughs> I suggest you stay off of me. Thank you, sir. Good evening, everyone. Um, as most of you know, over the last five weeks, the Office of Business Opportunities, we partnered with MBDA, Diane Sumter, and we provided at MP our Mentor Protege College for not only our Mentor Protege participants, but also those that have an interest in becoming Mentor Protege um, program participants. Um, the program was very, very successful, and this year we actually did something different. Before our previous trainings regarding the Mentor Protege Program, just focused more on providing information about the program itself. But what we did this year for this five week college, we call it the MP College, was actually bring in industry professionals to talk about realistic approaches that different companies could use to not only participate in contractual opportunities with the city but also how can you build the infrastructure of your existing businesses so that you have the capacity not only to participate and um, seize these opportunities that the city has to offer, but do a good job at it. So we're very, very fortunate. This year we have, well this, for this college, we had 23 participants of the Mentor Protege Program representing 18 different companies, but we also had a number of about 23, 24 companies or people that were represented from other individuals that are not um, actual participants, but they have an interest in becoming participants. So we're very excited. We have some of our presenters here today that I would like to recognize. As I stated, um, this was a joint venture with MBDA, Diane Sumter, but we also had city staff involved. We brought in other departments, Department of Utilities and Engineer, they participated, as well as um, procurement. They also participated in this training. So we're very, very fortunate that it was not only a joint venture outside of the city, but we also worked with our departments within to make sure that everybody understands the procurement process here, but also other capital improvement projects that we have here through the city, things that they can actually take advantage of. So we're very, very, it was very, very successful. What I do want to do is ask that the mayor come and join me in presenting our certificates to the graduates for the program, if you don't mind. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and I also would like to just recognize before we get started, um, Erica Wade from the Office of OBO, um, who also helped us bring this pro program together. Aisha, is she back here? She's back there. And Juliet Nettinelli, is she also in the room? They're our compliance staff. And they worked diligently to put this project together along with MBA, MBDA staff. So we're very, very fortunate to have them in our office. I've already recognized Diane Sumter. I would also like to recognize our presenters, Mr. William Bell Davis. Is he in the room? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Mr. Philip Drickman. Dickman, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Wayne By, David Myers, Brian Cully. Thank you very much. And we actually ran over um, our, our sessions for every Tuesday for the last five weeks, and no one wanted to go home. So that's just how good the sessions were for five until eight, but we stayed there till about 8.30, okay? We can do it right over here. Well, bring them, bring them all up. You want them all to come? <laughs> okay, we're trying to be lazy today. <laughs> Mr. Alan Brown. They can go around. I want them, once they get their certificate, they can walk around. Go this way. Stand back here for me. Okay. Okay. Need anything? Need anything? Okay. Jeremy Brown. All the way, go all the way over. And it's 
stand. Tom Cadenaria. Cat <laughs> Todd Carwell. Sorry. I know which ones they are. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> David Choi. Ciao. Oh, sorry. I've been talking to you all week. <laughs> okay. Ulysses. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, Mira. Sorry, Mira. Okay. You ready? Ulysses Chavez. Todd Corley. Charlie Depp. Charlie Deep, I'm sorry. Not the actor. <laughs> Janet Deep. Sorry. She got about 45. <laughs> it's not that many. Savannah Escarino. Farmer. <laughs> Dion Fleshman. James Flutter. Antonio Goodwin. Brian Green.
Willie Hamrick. Jason Hattrick. Alan Haywood. <laughs> Kenneth Isaac. Leslie Joseph. Robert Kim. Evans Khan. Abby Latson. Dan Lavender. Gerald Lee. David Lewis. Marguerite, Marguerite McClam.
Florence Ogarupa. Jennifer Powers. Betty Price. Jock Riley. Robert Van Horn. David Chow. Do I do that? Okay. Um, Lucinta Ellis Lewis. Michelle Rosenthal. They gave you, they gave you. Say one more thing. Um, we did have some very, very dedicated staff at MBDA, as I mentioned earlier. I want to take this time to acknowledge Tijuana Clifton and also Camille Shaw. Without those ladies, we would not have been able to do this project. Thank you so much. I also would like to thank the mayor and council for your dedication to this program and your leadership. Without you, we, we would not have be able, been able to do this program. And thank you for your continued support as well. We do have a reception for everyone um, down in the lobby. We hope that everyone can join us. Okay? Thank you. Thank
Palin. Next item. We're not, we're not going back to 30 at not all. 30? No, not 30. All right. We'll pick it up another time. Okay. 36. 36. 36. Rock and roll, um, Mr. Palin. Yes, sir. Next item is item 36. Council is asked to approve requests for funding from the Hospitality Tax Fund and to amend the fiscal year 2017-2018 Hospitality Tax Budget. There are three items deferred at the last meeting, um, and I think we're going to take those up now with, with leave to take up additional items at another meeting, all right? But, but just those three. Mr. Mr. McDowell? Yes, I move that... Uh, Excuse me. I move that the uh, the three items that we left on the table last last uh, at our last meeting be resurrected, and I move approval of them. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? We'll move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman. No. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. I and I, I know John um, a call that we had several other uh, requests emerging via email at least over the last several days and then, of course we always maintain the latitude to address additional issues as they come up and within the confines of whatever our, our um, what was it what was it uh, Jan our, our policy says right all right and we'll do that I is my vote all right um, I am 37. Walk on my avenue, speed, or it, removed, it, I it apologize. Was, it was removed, but um, I have gotten a couple calls on that today. I did speak to Mr. Brewer, or email with Mr. Brewer. As I understand it, the, the neighborhood is meeting this Sunday, and so um, there'll be, I guess, a, a confirmation that this is a request by the neighborhood. You guys keep um, the great work. Very proud of y'all, all right? You guys. Jamel, very proud. You got some awesome young um, people. All right. But okay. um, so I would ask that David touch bases um, with the neighborhood. Um, if at my understanding is there's some controversy or maybe there's some confusion regarding uh, people who want it or not, I would like to have it on our agenda uh, next next meeting, Mr. Palin, regardless of what the neighborhood says, so that we can at least um, hear from some of the residents who actually live on Rock Waccamaw. All right. Yes, ma'am. We will include that. Um, All right. I'd like to quickly go back to item 36. I, for the record, I do need to read those three items out. Absolutely, please. Okay. Uh, the three items. Item one is the Black Expo for $25,000. The Language Buds Cinco de Mayo Festival for 5000 And the Palmetto Opera for 10000 Those numbers... That is correct. Is that, is that correct? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Okay. Duly noted. Moving right. on. Item 38. Council's asked to approve the Boyd Island Project Temporary Construction License. So moved. Second. This is exciting, y'all. Um, any discussion? Um, uh, me and Mr. Davis going to be the first two out there. That Mr. Davis going to be the first two at Boyd Island. Uh, Next time. <laughs> With the previous question, Kurt Colorado. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Next item is consideration of matters discussed during the work session. Evening uh, emerge we need to take up this evening? Just the uh, um, endorsement of the Park Street uh, rehabilitation. 
which so we're gonna authorize staff to move forward with cobbling together some uh for some the type matching of matching funds for the sidewalk improvement the waste um uh, right now they're looking at two options for how to handle the the uh trash cans that are there along with realigning the parking so so you and missy and rosie gonna work it all out and robert we are work it all out Yep, <laughs> Rosie and I got it figured out. We just we get ads Missy to come that's, along that's for the, the word. That's the word about uh, the um, but yeah. Let's let's uh, authorize staff. Let's let's pull together some type of a um, solution to the issue that might address it finally. And that we did did it in a temporary way many years ago, but the amount of growth we've seen down there and what's coming just to that street alone uh, does require we address it with some degree of finality. So. We good. Um, we need a, a, a vote or some direction, uh, of staff to address and come back to us with something. Is it, yes, this sir. motion, Mr. Rickerman? Second. Moved. Second. Second. Discussion. Uh, with the previous question, Clerk Colorado. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mr. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Your charge is to leverage as many different sources or, as, as you can and come back to us with a plan for, for, for approval, with, which, but of course it would include our financial participation. All right. Uh, another item. Yes, sir. Uh, calendar. Oh, yeah. We, um, if it's okay with, uh, talk, I did talk to Daniel and Tamika um, and um, Mr. Davis. I, I didn't talk to you or uh, um, Howard about uh, not having the April 3rd meeting. It's square in the middle of, of spring break. Okay. And staff has looked at the various calendars, nothing pressing. So we uh, forego April 3rd meeting. I know you moved? guys. All right, is there a second? Second. I know you guys really look forward to seeing each other and everything else, but um, <laughs> we'll, we'll move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. And the staff is probably really happy about that. Uh, all right. The uh, next item is City Council Committee reports or referrals. All right. Any uh, reports or referrals? Mr. De uh, Mr. Rickman. Mm -hmm. uh, the public safety meeting held two public hearings on the after two hours extended permit. Uh, we listened to testimony from from all parties, uh, neighborhoods, business owners, interested parties, for close to about seven hours, I think, total, along with taking in lots of information. Um, we have provided some information to legal to put together uh, an, an ordinance to address some of the issues that have been brought forward uh, for this council to considerate. Um, the process would be there is that once legal has been able to do that, that they would put it on our agenda for us to review. There'd be a public hearing and two readings for that to move forward. Um, we took in a lot of consideration and spent a great deal of time as a committee communicating. And um, we hope that y'all will be pleased with what we have done. I have nothing to add. All right. I have nothing to add at all. We're fine. All right. Thank you. Mr. Duval. I, I would just request that as soon as we have a draft, that we uh, the council be given that draft to study. There are a lot of different issues involved, and the more eyes we have on this proposal, the more likely it is to get a majority of the council. Agree. Agree. All right. No worries. All right. So. Um, we're going to have this proposal go to legal and then to full council. All right. Um, and we'll take up next, ASA, next meeting. Yeah, as, as soon as, as, as legal is yeah. able to put it into form right. um, for us to, for consideration. Right. Let's see, but as soon as, let's, let's, let's get it to everybody. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Um, it comes, it's uh, actually come out of the, Three-person committee. Uh, let's go ahead and um, mm -hmm. move forward with the motion yeah, to approve the legalized. major report. So move. Is there a second. Second. With the previous question, Kirk Colorado. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. To approve the committee report. What? You're approving the committee, the committee report. report. Okay. <laughs> I'll approve that. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. And as soon as, let's make sure everybody has it, y'all. All right. 
All right, um, any other referrals or reports? Uh, seeing none, we have one citizen who signed up to speak. Did I, did I miss anything, Jeff? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Mr. Cliff Elliott is there. Uh, you're good to go? You're, you're on the subcommittee with, 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 with Missy and, 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 uh, and, and, and crew? All right. Um, any other appearance of the public? I see none. I uh, have a non-debatable motion to adjourn. So move. Uh, second. second. Any discussion? Thank you all so much for a productive meeting. Uh, Teresa, if you're watching us, go, go some find rest. something better to do. <laughs> 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 go get some rest. Move <laughs> the previous question, Kirk Colorall. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Duvall. Get some rest. Aye. Mr. Aye. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Have a good evening.